Amy was born premature, three months. She weighed two and a half pounds, and it's just unimaginable how hard it is to have a little baby in the hospital. I was working a lot of hours. We had four kids at home, and that was a real hard time. And Teresa spent most of her days at the hospital with Amy because she didn't come home for three months. When we brought Amy home, we were all very happy. She was very, very quiet, preferred to be by herself. Interesting thing about Amy was that she didn't talk. We were concerned and we took her to different doctors and speech pathologists, and they really couldn't find anything wrong with her. She just didn't want to talk. She'd point to what she'd want, and we'd get it for her. She would just gesture, and people would do things for her. She'd tug at your pants legs when she was smaller, and somebody would pick her up. We weren't overly concerned until she was about five years old, and then we were told that something wasn't normal there. I started to wonder what was happening. Amy was just really different. She absolutely loved watching old movies. She'd watch them over and over again. And then she'd dress up and try to imitate what she was watching. And this one time, she went in the bathroom, came out. She had her hair set in curlers. It was just the most perfect job you could ever imagine. Now, she was four years old. I couldn't have even set her hair that perfect. And then she had a big red bandana tied over it. And I couldn't believe how good she was at doing her hair. I think she was more of a loner because she was just happy by herself. And she loved watching old movies. She'd watch them over and over again. It was different because none of the other children did that. When she was watching her movies, and she wouldn't even acknowledge that you were in there. She was almost trance-like, just, just staring at it oblivious to anything else that was around her. I found it a little odd. Amy discovered silent movies on her own, but I always felt like there was something connected to her not speaking and her love for silent movies. I thought it was strange. We were concerned that she didn't talk. Something different was definitely going on. Amy started to blossom around six years old. I don't understand why, just all of a sudden, she started talking. I was really happy. When she did start talking, we were relieved because we knew it wasn't permanent. I can't remember when I first noticed that Amy was out of step with other children. She was always a bit eccentric and quirky, even as a toddler. But she was so darn cute that we just gave her latitude, let her be herself. I just really wanted her to get out of the house and get some exercise and, and have some fun and maybe meet some new people. She was afraid of a lot of things. She was not a joiner. She was a loner. I think sometimes Amy felt like she didn't really belong. She didn't connect with kids her age at all. And I felt bad about that. I was sad. All of our kids, we'd ask them what they'd want for birthdays or Christmas presents, and it was usually hockey skates or fishing poles, and Amy wanted old posters or old movies, old silent movies. If we were ever on vacation, we had to keep our eyes open for anything old. That's what she wanted. Amy loved to go to antique stores, and she seemed to find connections with certain things that she would see. She would see a dress, and she'd say, oh, I had one just like that only mine was yellow and I wore it to this party. I remember there was this man that I talked to and he was so nice and he bought me a Coke. I started to wonder what was happening. By the time Amy was nine or 10, she just absolutely was obsessed with movie stars and especially movie stars that had tragic deaths. She would research the people in the movie, and if somebody died young, she would do more research. Amy talked about dying young all the time. It was disturbing, but she seemed to have a lot of empathy for people that had tragic childhoods. And I don't know where that, where that comes from. I was concerned about the obsession, and I did try to steer her away from it. I would say it's only gonna make you sad. Concentrate on the happy things that happen. It was a little odd when she started talking about Jack Pickford. 
She was in love with Jack Pickford. He was her first crush. She had to have been 10 years old. I wasn't home a lot, but when I was home, I did hear the name Jack Pickford a lot. I didn't know anything about Jack Pickford until Amy told me. Jack Pickford was Mary Pickford's brother. Mary Pickford was an actress. She was America's sweetheart back in the 1900s through the 1930s. But Amy really felt sorry for Jack. From what I've heard about Jack Pickford, I don't think I would want him associating with one of my daughters. He's been portrayed as a wife abuser, an alcoholic. Supposedly, he died of syphilis. But Amy carried pictures of Jack Pickford all the time. I found it really strange that Amy was so enamored with Jack Pickford. He's not the kind of man, from what I heard, that you would want your daughter associating with. Amy would get so upset when she would read something or somebody would say something, somebody's blog or something on the computer, and she would go, that's just not right. She was, I'm so mad. How could they say that about Jack? They don't even know him. It was extremely bizarre to have a 10-year-old defending a man who has such a reputation. At first, I thought Amy's fascination with Jack Pickford was just a phase, but then I discovered that it was much bigger than that. One day when Amy was about 12 years old, she showed me a picture. I looked at the picture and I had no idea who it was. There was just something about her that was so sad, so tragic. It was a picture of Lucille Rickson. She went on to tell me Lucille's story and it was just so heartbreaking. She said, Mom, I think I was Lucille Rickson in my last life. I had never heard of the lady before. I was shocked because I thought she's only 12, 13 years old. But looking back, she had been doing this for the last eight, nine years. And then she said, Mom, she died when she was 14. When she came to me with the photograph of Lucille, it was like somebody socked me in the gut because she truly believed what she was saying. I was surprised the knowledge that she had. This wasn't a famous movie star to me. I just spent hours researching Lucille. Unfortunately, Lucille had a very tragic life. Her mother, Ingeberg, was the ultimate stage mother. Lucille made her first movie when she was only five years old. And she was very beautiful, and the studio really took advantage of her. And if you didn't go along with what the studio said, you just didn't work. Well, they even called her the youngest leading lady in Hollywood. She worked long hours. I mean, she even had roles where she played the wife. Lucille just grew up way too fast. She became ill. She was bedridden. There were a lot of rumors, but her mother had a heart attack. She collapsed and died right on top of Lucille. And then two weeks later, Lucille was dead. Lucille's last words were, mother is waiting. I think that Amy is speaking up for a child star that never had her own voice. Amy didn't have her own voice for a while, and now she does through Lucille. It just breaks my heart. That made me start thinking a little bit more. There would be things that she would say that weren't on the movies. OK, maybe she's really on to something here. When Amy saw the picture of Lucille, it triggered emotions and then memories of her past life. It turns out that Lucille Rickson and Jack Pickford had worked together in several movies. And she knew all this without even researching it. My name is Amy, and I'm 17 years old. I never understood why I was drawn to the silent movies. No one else was interested in that. It made me feel a bit odd that something wasn't right. When I first saw a picture of Lucille, there was only about two known pictures of her on the internet. And when I saw it, I basically just stopped breathing. I knew that there was so much there. It all clicked about my obsession with dying young, obsession with child stars. And then when I saw she was in The Hillbilly with Jack Pickford, that all clicked that I, I knew him, and that's why I had these feelings.
One memory I remember specifically is looking down and seeing beautiful silver shoes and a long frilly dress and Jack Pickford on set drinking Coca-Cola all the time. He would come up to me and ask, how are you doing today, lovely, or how are you doing, pretty? Lots of darling and sweetie, and he seemed like he genuinely cared about how I was feeling that day. And it didn't come across as creepy or that he was trying to hit on me. It just seemed like he really cared. I knew that I would love him forever. One memory I had as Lucille is looking down and seeing blood all over. Um, it's written that I died from tuberculosis, but exactly how I died, I think what's written isn't true.